There's a, I'm going to get I've got another guy on the phone now, a, a, another lightweight, top quality fighter who's um, well, he's quit. He quit a few years ago. Stopped boxing finally a couple of years ago. But hey, this is the sort of guy that may you never know may turn back the clock. He was without doubt uh, my favourite fighter from uh, Norfolk for about a hundred years. Jonathan Faxon, how are you, John? Hello there. Not bad. Not bad at all. I've got Billy Schwer in the studio with me as well, Jono. Yeah. Hey, Billy. I'm great, mate. How you doing? I'm brilliant, yeah, real good. Fantastic. J Jono, now you last fought a couple of years ago, 2009, and now and, and I've seen you once or twice, John, and like me, you pack on a few pounds occasionally. Are you... Hey, are, are, hey, no, hey. easy, easy. I'm being polite, I'm being polite. John, um, I, 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 have, you, have you definitely quit? Have you left boxing for good? Oh, definitely. Listen, I retired. They were talking about me going into the prize fighter. OK. But, you know, at the low well ways. But, listen, I ain't got it anymore. Um, I know that. My wife turned around to t and told me I didn't have any more. And, well, I thought she was talking about my boxing. <laughs> Obviously, she wasn't. Um, but, no, I I've got so many things going on in my life now. You know, I'm busy, 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 and I, I love what I'm doing. You love what you're doing. And then no regrets, Bill. I mean, you know, I mean, Ricky Hatton still talks about fighting you, and you know, it was one of, still one of his hardest fights. The two of you, you know, the two of you that night, you bled a blood bank between you. It was, it was a savage fight. John, what, what, were, what, what do you think was the highlight of your career? What was the low light? And then you can tell them what you're up to at the moment. What was the highlight the, first, the, John? The highlight of my career, was, career must have been winning the British title. You know, Lee Meager, beating Lee Meager and lifting that British title, that meant the absolute world to me. And um, I was very, that was a very, very proud, and, proud and, moment. And also, you'd been fighting for it on and off for six or seven years as well. So it was an overnight success, John, wasn't you know, it? No, it took me 14 years. From the day I turned <sighs> pro, it took me 14 wow. years to actually lift that belt and win that belt. Three attempts in 14 years. Wow. Must be an easier way of earning the food quid, eh, Steve? Oh, hey, listen, I'll tell you what, there must be an easier way. Although I keep having people in this studio that keep convincing me that maybe, maybe there isn't because they love it so much. John, let me ask you this. What was the low light? What was the well, worst uh, moment? Worst what, moment in your career? Um, most probably getting beat by Emmanuel Burton. Yeah, I was, I was there number one at the time. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, it was just, it, I, I didn't listen, I, I overtrained, and um, I beat myself that night. It was a big, it was a big showdown in Norwich, wasn't it? And you, I know that your family are involved with the tickets, and, and I, I remember going into it, I'm not being an after-time, I remember talking to John Ingle, saying, are you sure his focus is in the right place? And I, can, I yeah. swear to you, that was true, and I just thought, perhaps you'd taken your eye off the prize, and, and you I had taken my eye off the prize. I thought I was chocolate, you know, good enough to eat, I thought I was better than what I was, and you know what? I got beat and I got found out. But that was a lesson. That's a lesson in life and life's full of them. Yeah, it's true. Well, John, what about now? What, are you up, what have you been up to the last two or three years? What does John Faxon well, do day to day? I, 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 every day is a different day to me. At the minute, you know, um, like I say, we're organising. We do after-dinner speeches. We bring boxers down to the Norfolk area, to the Norwich area. On Friday night, we've got Barry McGuigan. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fantastic night. We've had Ricky Hatton, Nigel Benn, uh, down to Nor Norfolk, Frank Bruno. Michael Watson, uh, Mark Gold, Spencer Oliver, you wow. name, you know, Paul oh, yeah. Ingle. We're always open, to, you know, to boxers actually coming down and, and telling their stories. And, you know, we, we keep the prices nice and, nice and, you know, low so people can come off the streets, come down. They can, you know, because obviously people think it's a corporate, a corporate time. You know, you know, need a table of 10, etc. It's not. We've got some great corporate sponsors. And uh, they help us put these shows on, and it's it really is a good night. Keep I'll invite box. you down to one if you want, Steve. Listen, any time you invite me down, and, and Come if down I Friday, Barry McGuigan. I can't do this Friday, mate. We got oh. live boxing on Box Nation. We're at the Trox here in East London. Bring your crashy oh, helmets. What a night that'll be. Working. Listen, Jono, thanks very much indeed. John Faxton there, thanks very much. <laughs>